Uh, if we look at this, guys, um, here is going to be uh, pretty much a general form for a conic. Okay, so we can write all of our conic sections: a parabola, an ellipse, an hyperbola, a circle, all in this general form. All right, but we've also talked about standard forms, right? And let, I'm just going to go through one of them for each one. All right, and we'll kind of talk about it. So the first one we talked about was a parabola. Where we said a parabola, we could rewrite as x squared equals 4p. Uh, let's just do the x and k. That's fine. Uh, and actually, let's do so. X squared equals 4py. That is a parabola with the the vertex at the at the origin, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a parabola. Then we talked about an ellipse. And remember, ellipse had x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. We had a hyperbola, which was let's just do this: x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. And then we also talk about a circle, where a circle is going to be in a special type of ellipse, but a circle is when a and b are equal to each other. So we can just use a squared for each one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for these three examples, all right, these are all, these, some of these are verticals. Actually, these are all have a horizontal, right? This is where, um, I'm sorry, well this one's gonna be opening up and down. This one's where you can have a horizontal major axis. This will have a transverse axis, which is horizontal. And this one is just going to be a circle. So this is just a little general form when I talked about parabola, um, ellipse, hyperbola, and a circle, all right? Now obviously you guys know there's another type of the equation, right? You can have the equation where the parabola opens um, horizontally. You could have a vertical major axis. Here you could have a transverse axis, which is, um, vertical, which would be the other formula. But the circle, we notice it's kind of always going to be the same. We always know that our A is going to equal each other, right? We know that these two have to be the same. You have the exact same major axis um, and minor axis. They're equal to each other. So if I gave you a formula in this, or if I gave you an equation that was in this formula, how could you determine if it was a parabola, an ellipse, hyperbola, or circle? You could convert it to each one of these formulas, right? Or there are other um, counterparts. Or you could, so you can convert it to each one of these formulas and determine it. Or there's a little bit of a test that we can look at, all right? Now, so what we're gonna do is, to do this test, we're gonna look at the coefficients of our x squared and our y squared, right? So what you guys notice is that really our coefficient of x squared is one over a squared, right? And here for y is also gonna be one over a squared. So if you kind of remember, what we can do is, if the coefficients of my x squared and my y squared are exactly the same, meaning if a is equal to c, then you know you're gonna have a circle. So if you look in an equation and you know a is equal to c, then obviously you know that your major axis and your minor axis are the same. So if you have a equals c, that's gonna tell you you have a circle when you have a conic section written in this format. Um, let's look at a parabola. On a parabola, we only have one squared, right? It's either x squared or y squared. In this case, I have an x squared. So therefore, my, I would have a zero as the coefficient of y squared. So if we looked at, if I gave you a formula in this format, a or c, one of them would have to be zero, correct? Yes, John, correct? Mm -hmm. Only one of them has to be zero because there's only one x squared or one y squared. So if you were to multiply a times c and you got zero, then you know you have a parabola. So what I would look at, if you're given a formula in this form, if you only have one x squared and one y squared, ladies and gentlemen, then you know you're going to have a parabola. All right? Now let's go and take a, take a look at an ellipse and a hyperbola. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, that an ellipse, we're always adding, right? We're adding our x squared over 8, or we're adding the x squared and the y squared. So therefore, if I multiply a times c, that value has to be greater than zero, right? Two positive numbers are always going to add greater than zero. So if, it's, if you multiply a times c and it's greater than zero, that value, so if you find your a and c and you add them up, I'm sorry, you multiply them, and if it's greater than zero, then you have an ellipse. All right? Now, remember, hyperbolas was subtracting, right? It's the same thing, but now you subtract. So therefore, what you really have is a positive coefficient times a negative coefficient, that means if you have a times c is less than zero, then you have a hyperbola. 
All right? So these are going to be your main points you guys are going to want to know. So if I give you an equation in this format, all you need to do is understand if it's a times zero, then you have a equals zero, a times c equals zero, you have a parabola. A times c is greater than zero, you have an ellipse. A times c is less than zero, you have hyperbola. And if a is equal to c, then you know you have a circle when it's in this format. Okay? That's it. And guys, you're